Hi, Watch the Tropics Topics of Monday, July the 22nd, 2019. It's been a little quieter since Barry happened, but we have had this Invest 94L come up recently, and it looked like looks like it is trying to develop right as it approaches the Florida Peninsula and the northwestern Bahamas right now. It has a 60% chance of developing in the next 48 hours and 5 days, as it has been developing pretty rapidly and has been at least showing some signs that it may be about to become a tropical depression. Uh, this uh, advisory package right here showed a 30% chance of development in the last tropical weather outlook that has since doubled because of just the recent trends we've been seeing with the system. Here's the wide shot of the Atlantic right now. Apart from 94L, you can see right over here in the northwestern Bahamas right here. Not much else to speak of. Uh, main development region pretty dry as per usual during this time of year, although this will likely change as we get into August and September as we get into the meat of the season. You can see this is the uh, close-up view of 94L right here, courtesy of NASA's MSFC site. And you can see that it has become, if you were looking at the system yesterday, you noticed it was a pretty large and kind of sporadic-looking system. It wasn't very well-defined. It had a little bit of a wave axis there. This is a tropical wave. This, this is coming from tropical origins. Uh, but it wasn't a very well-defined system. There was a lot of dry air in the area, and it was just having a very hard time generating convection that would maintain itself. So it was very weak, sporadic, and pretty short-lived in terms of convective burst. That has since changed since yesterday. You can see there is a much larger convective envelope as compared to if you were watching this yesterday, and it is becoming more and more akin to the look of a potentially uh, developing tropical depression right here. And you can even see, if you look closely in the low levels, you can see that there is a bit of a surface rotation right here, just off the coast of Andros Island. If we look at this ASCAT pass from earlier today, uh, this was coming, yeah, this is from earlier today. Uh, you can see that at the time the system was centered over Andros Island, but you can see there's a little bit of a rotation right here, possibly closed, and you can see some western, uh, some westerlies right here towards the south of the surface center, and that indicates that we could have a closed low on our hands. So it's possible that this might already be, be a tropical depression, though it is unlikely. We just have to see if this maintains itself, and if it does, then it is likely that this will at least gain some sort of tropical depression designation before it approaches the Florida Peninsula. As you can see here, this is the water vapor shot right here, and this kind of explains why the system was able to I guess, become a lot better defined than it was yesterday. You can see there's a lot of moving pieces here. So you can see here there's a big upper low right here just to the north of um, Puerto Rico right here. And that's moving steadily westward with this system right here. But you can also tell here there's a bit of an upper trough trying to merge with a larger trough that's going to be moving into uh, the Great Lakes, which we'll discuss in a minute. And then there's another weaker upper low over here of the eastern gulf. All of these are coming into... To, are coming together to create kind of an upper anticyclone feature over the system itself, which has been kind of helping to push apart some of the dry air that was impeding on it yesterday and some of the wind shear as well. So it kind of has a bit better of a uh, signature today. You can kind of see as we go back to the visible imagery, you can see all this cirrus over here kind of getting pushed off towards the south, towards the east of the actual center, and that indicates that there is some sort of an anticyclone feature. You can also tell that here with some of these clouds over here over uh, near the Everglades being pushed up into Florida, those serious clouds right there. Those are all indicative that there is an upper anticyclone right here, and that is favorable for the system to get going, but it won't really last that way for a whole long, for a whole lot, whole lot longer. You can see here, this is the initialization basically from the GFS run, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits here. You can see these all these features here, this little upper trough right here over North Carolina, this weak upper low over here to over the southeastern Gulf, and this upper low over here that I said was north of Puerto Rico. All these are kind of acting in tandem to create a little bit of an upper ridge feature. As you can see, uh, kind of offset from where the system is right now. It's currently located where my cursor is right here. Uh, but then as this system begins to progress towards the north there's going to be there's a bit there's a reason why this is progressing off towards the north as shown in some of the forecasts because you can see here this is the 850 millibar heights right here kind of about a mile above the surface right now and you can see that there's a there's just a line right here you can you can notice that is a cold front that is moving towards the south in association with a much larger trough you can see up here over Minnesota and Wisconsin that's going to be dipping down into the Great Lakes right now and you can see that kind of extends from said trough and as that as we progress out in time you can see this boundary shifts farther towards the south extends basically from texas all the way up into new england right here and as we move this forward you can see the trough amplifies as it moves into michigan into the general great lakes area and you can see that as a result the front starts to dip south now this front 
is going to be pulling up 94L. You can see here, this right here is where the actual center of the system is. The, the models aren't really generating this just because of how quickly it's getting its act together, and it's also a very small system. You go back to the satellite imagery and see it's not very big. You see the main convective envelope here basically just encompasses the area between Grand Bahama and parts of Andros Island. It's not a very large system. Um, the Florida Peninsula itself is more than double the size of it, so it's not going to be a very large system at all. It's just going. It's a very weak and small system, which is why some of the models are having a bit of a tough time actually initializing this. So you can see this is basically this vorticity center right here. Just watch this. Don't. There's not going to be really any isobars surrounding it or anything like that, like we would normally see. But it's just kind of pay attention to where the vorticity is maximized right here off the Florida Peninsula. As you can see, this frontal boundary moves south, and as a result. This area right here, the 94L, starts to cur curve towards the north in a conjunction with a much larger ridge out here near Bermuda and this front. Now, as a result, it's just feeling the flow here on the surface because it doesn't extend very high up into the troposphere. Weaker storms like this, and frankly, even smaller storms, have a very have their influences very focused towards the surface. So all of this upper level flow right here. None of this is going to be moving in conjunction with 94L. In fact, it's probably just going to remain in place. So this upper level anticyclone right here is going to remain over the Bahamas as 94L begins to move just on or just to the east of the Florida Peninsula. You can see this is the same time. This is Tuesday morning. Here we have our, our system right here just off of Cape Canaveral. Well, if I go back to the upper level flow, you can see that the upper anticyclone is still over in the northwestern Bahamas. And at this point, there's, there's starting to be a little bit of a shear on top of the system, a little bit of a southwesterly shear as this trough begins to become the main dominant feature and starts to pull the system north and shear it a little bit as this front starts to dip down. As we go out even further into, th into the 36 hour range, you can see that the front is starting to approach the coastline and as a result 94L starts to instead from going from a northward jog to a more northeastward jog and as we go forward in the model here you can see that the, tr that the flow on the east side really starts to amplify here. This is over this is about 140 knots in some cases up in the 250 millibar level. Uh, that's not the surface, obviously, but that's a, at the, uh, the 250 millibar level. And as a result, there is a very strong shear that is starting to be initiated on top of 94L. And as a result, the system is going to, whatever is left of the system, is going to weaken by this point. And then eventually, by Wednesday morning, it will likely merge with the trough as this thing begins to move out into areas between Quebec and into the New England area as we get into Wednesday, and this will basically become no more by that by that point, which is why the National Hurricane Center has the same percentages for both 48, and five day, 48 hours and five days out, because this thing is not going to be around for very long at all. In fact, we can look at these track forecasts here. You see, they're all in pretty good consensus here. There's nothing really deviating here, uh, and you can, it's a pretty tight-knit track. You can see moving just on or just the east of the Florida Peninsula and then recurving along the southeast coast, basically from the Carolinas out to sea. And by this point right here, it probably would have merged with the front anyways. Um, if there is one threat that would be the largest, it would be rainfall, although even that isn't expected to be too much because the system is going to be moving pretty quickly and it's going to be pretty small. Remember with Barry, which we discussed about a week or two ago, <coughs> That was a much larger system and was very slow moving, so rainfall projections were a lot higher over here in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas, while in, in this case, there's not expected to be a ton of rain, maybe on the order of about one to two inches along the Florida Peninsula and then up into the Carolinas, although some of this also may be associated with that front that's coming in because that's an, it's an unusually strong front for July, so as a result, there may be a little bit more moisture in front of it and therefore more thunderstorm activity than you would normally see. So as a result, it's not going to be particularly strong right here in terms of rainfall. So it's probably just going to be more akin to what you would normally see in an afternoon along the Florida Peninsula because this is the time of year where you usually get afternoon convection and those are usually associated with pretty heavy rainfall totals over just a one day period, but they never really get abnormally high. And that's likely to be the same situation here with 94L here and nothing else really is expected. Maybe some gusty winds if this thing gets a little bit closer to the Florida Peninsula as you can see here on the model track. None of them really move into Florida, but it's going to be pretty close. So if it gets a little bit farther towards the west, then maybe 
these rainfall totals and the winds will increase as well. But either way, impacts are not expected to be pretty major. And if anything, it's just going to be a kind of an average rainy day, I would expect, for portions of eastern Florida. And then even less so up here in the Carolinas, where it's expected to remain a little bit farther offshore here. And it would just be kind of a rip current issue if that depends on how intense it gets. So that's basically the gist of 94L right here. Again, organizing pretty quickly here. It could become a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm. And if it were to become a weak tropical storm, it would gain the name Chantal, although it's looking like it would just peak out at a weak tropical storm at maximum as this thing does not have very long because of the of what we discussed earlier. And it is a little bit close to land, so that might be a big might be a hindrance to its future track. So not, not a whole lot to ex expect it to come out of the system, although it is a pretty interesting feature. Remember, it is late July. We are getting closer towards the peak of the hurricane season in August and September. And this is just a reminder that this sort of stuff can happen. Homegrown activity has always been a possibility this year. And this is a potential culprit of that. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, this is probably going to be the only video update I will produce on this, considering that this is not expected to last very long. And it would likely be followed up by a live event later today, or at least a tropical weather bulletin later today. Uh, so look out for that. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay weather alert during this time.